Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Ave Maria Press Professional Development Webinar Series. In today's webinar, Father Michael White and Tom Corcoran will share new ways to prepare for Lent in the midst of the COVID pandemic. My name is Erin Pierce. I am the Parish and Curriculum Marketing Specialist at Ave Maria Press. I would like to recognize our webinar partners in Word and Witness, formerly known as the National Conference for Catechetical Leadership, the National Association of Catholic Family Life Ministers, the National Association for Lay Ministry, and the Catholic Campus Ministry Association. Everyone in the audience is muted today, but you are able to ask questions. Questions may be sent to our presenters using the question section of the GoToWebinar panel, which you see here, and I'll read as many of those questions as possible at the end of the presentation today. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be sent to you tomorrow via email. With that, I would like to welcome and introduce our presenters today. Reverend Michael White and Tom Corcoran are co-authors of the best-selling Rebuilt Parish series, including the award-winning Rebuilt, which led to the Catholic TV series, The Rebuilt Show, which they host, Tools for Rebuilding, Rebuilding Your Message, The, Rebuilding Field, the Rebuilt Field Guide, and Church Money. They have also co-authored the Message series for Advent and Lent. Father Michael and Tom have spoken at conferences and parishes throughout the United States and Canada, and at diocesan gatherings and conferences in Austria, Australia, Germany, Ireland, Poland, and Switzerland. They have been guests on EWTN, Catholic TV, Salt and Light Television, and numerous Catholic radio programs. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Erin. Thanks for Thanks, having Aaron. Wonderful. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter so that we can see your screen. Awesome. And you can go ahead and take it away. All right. Well, again, thanks, Aaron. And um, yeah, so uh, Father Michael and I have worked together in the parish uh, for uh, over 20 years together now. And so I've had an opportunity to do all kinds of different things here in the parish from children's ministry to student uh, ministry and youth, youth ministry where I began to running small groups to helping with our capital campaign uh, and development now and now serve as associate to Father Michael. Uh, aside from that, married to my wife Mia and we have eight kids. Uh, our oldest uh, is 19, just uh, is starting boot camp in the Marines, so you can pray for him, please. <laughs> and uh, we a daughter who will uh, just a few weeks, actually. Uh, so just in, in the question box there, just want to let you know, we're talking about Lent. Um, you know, let us know if A, you have your Lenten plans all nailed down, B, you're starting to put your plans together for Lent, or C, uh, you're asking when is Ash Wednesday? When does Lent start? Let us know just in the question box there uh, where you are. And um, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about Lent, but we're going to talk about a few other things as well. Uh, just to 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 uh, kind of refresh you on on rebuild uh we wrote the book and we also have a um a ministry that is helping other parishes we say that our rebuilt ministry our rebuilt movement is about making disciples by encouraging equipping and inspiring other parishes to make disciples um our vision is really to build a kind of vast army of christ followers of people who are on fire for christ who are changing and transforming the world uh, by bringing God, the message of God's love and God and Jesus's love to the world. And really what we love to emphasize and we're so proud of is that the Rebuild Association is based in parish experience. 20 years, 20 years, 40 years worth of parish experience and we're still, we're, we're still learning and growing. In the association, we're sharing with you as we will today, what we're learning and what we're doing right now. And we're all learning real time right now in, the, in this in this new COVID world. We're all trying to figure it out and figure it out together. So we like to say we don't know everything about running a parish. We said that before COVID. We definitely don't know everything about running a parish now. Uh, we are still growing and learning. Uh, what we're trying to do with today is just take what is in our cup, what we have learned, what we're experiencing, and pour it into your cup. 
uh, just some other introductory thoughts before it is that, um, you know, this is our first full COVID Lent, you know, so there's some ways we think we've been through this stuff before, but it, even today as our staff step back and to look at what's coming up, we realized this is different than last year. So um, if you remember last year, we were in the middle of Lent when the COVID crisis hit, at least here in the United States where everything kind of shut down. So uh, I remember we had a really good message series going. It was talking about healing and the power of healing. And I was really excited for it. And all of a sudden in the middle of Lent last year, we had attacked away from that and begin talking more about, of course, what was going on in our world and, and make all kinds of changes um, from meeting in person to meeting digitally to fully investing on our online campus, you know. So uh, that was last year. You know, it looks like going this Lent, we kind of know what to expect that it'll, you know, most places are probably you have an online campus and you have people coming in person. So we're going to straddle that. Holy Week, again, is going to look a lot different. Uh, again, at least for us last year here, pretty much everything was shut down. Um, you know, we, they, the, the diocese did things uh, online, but they took care of, of most of that. So again, very different. Now this year we'll have people back in person for Holy Week. And of course, same thing with Easter. So it is going to be different from last year. So there's some ways we can be learning from what's been going on this year, but it's not an apples to apples from what happened last year. Uh, Father Michael I've talked, I've talked about the last few weeks, just in 25 years or 20 plus years of doing this, we've never had so much disruption, right? It's never been harder to lead a church right now. So many times we've had to talk about other issues, or at least do we talk about what's going on in the rest of the world or change tech on that? Well, we've been doing this long enough, and I'm sure this is true for many of you as well, that when it comes to Ash Wednesday, uh, Holy Week, the Triduum, you've got your plan. It's all in place and you can do it. It's a lot of work for sure, but it doesn't take a lot of thought to get ready for it. This year, that's different too. Yeah. And so even just, uh, you know, we asked in the question box if you had not even thought about it yet. The reality is if you should put up today, you can just start to think about it. Um, just an, another just introductory thought because, you know, we said this was going to share with you three ways to make this Lent great and to think about Lent. Uh, there is a spiritual power to Lent. And I think we all kind of know that, but I think it's important to, to remind ourselves of that. There really is an opportunity in this season. Um, you know, for us in our parish, uh, this has played out uh, many years ago. We did uh, Purpose Driven Life, 40 Days of Purpose, and we made that into a campaign. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. But we decided that we would take Lent and go through the 40 Days of Purpose, the, the, the Purpose Driven Life, and do the 40 Days of Purpose campaign, and it changed completely our parish. It was a watershed moment in our parish to do that campaign. And so I think that's possible for your parish, too, that it could be a watershed moment in, the, in this Lent. Do you want to add anything more to that, Mark? Well, I think that you can use Lent, especially it's, it's, it's sort of designed to, to uh, take the parish on a journey, to go someplace. To make it uh, your goal, if the parish is going to uh, uh, be different, be in a different place at the end of this Lenten season. So we're going to talk about that yeah, some more in, in a few minutes as well. So, um, again, people do have a desire to go deeper in Lent. There's an, an openness, a spiritual depth. Um, also, that we have the leverage that some people will be coming back looking for connection who have been disconnected for a while. We want to hopefully uh, leverage that as well. So three ways we are starting to look at Lent. And the first really begins with ourselves as leaders. And we have to recognize this, that we've been called and created to serve this generation. Um, I love um, Acts 13, where it said, David served the purposes of God in his generation. Uh, uh, Psalm 24, which is up there on your screen, says this, who shall ascend the mountain of the Lord who shall stand in his holy place, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, such is the generation of those who seek, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Uh, I don't know if you remember many years ago, there was a Chris Tomlin song by that song, by that name titled, Give Us Clean Hands. And that's resonated with me for a long time, that what we ache for, what we long for, is to lead our generation to seek Christ, to seek God, to seek his face. 
And that's what we've all been called to do. Every single one of us is called to, to serve this generation and bring people to Christ. Um, you know, so, and that's what all the saints do throughout the history of the church um, and throughout the history of, of, of God partnering with people that from David to Paul, to Augustine, to Ignatius Loyola, to, to Mother Teresa, to St. John Paul the Great, to all these, what, what God has called us to do is to lead our generation to, to interact with God, to seek the face of God. And what all these saints did is they understood their times and how to serve the purposes of God in their generation. Now that word generation is kind of interesting. You know, a generation used to be, you know, 25 years and that, that people went through the same exact thing. <laughs> well, our generation, right, it's, it's, it's different. I think generation does mean everybody who's alive right now on this earth, we're called to serve. And then you can even think though, the differences of generations we are called to serve, the, the different experiences of life from you know, baby boomers to Gen Xers to millennials to Gen Z. I mean, all very different worlds, right? Um, this hit me um, Thanksgiving, not this past Thanksgiving, but the Thanksgiving before I was home and at my, my mom's house and was listening to a conversation that was between my mom and my, my kids. And my mom was talking about growing up. Um, my mom was born in 47. So she was talking about growing up about her experience of TV. And of course, TV was new. And she had a black and white TV. And her experience of TV was the kind of prime time hours where, you know, you had three channels of which to watch stuff. And that was my mom, who was a baby boomer. That's what she experienced. And it was just so amazing. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, the difference. Now my kids, uh, you know, and for me, if you know, uh, I'm Gen Xer, you know, I remember, you know, we had, we didn't just have the, the three channels. We had another three or so, right? And remember the turn the dial, you know, UHF, you know, for those of you who remember, um, and now you got like reruns and things like that. That was what, I, that was a big way to step forward in my time or the big, you know, influx of new TV options. And the TV was on all the time. There was shows on all the time. Now to my kids, <laughs> to my, I have a daughter who's six, Lydia, who, you know, she's watching TV on her phone since I can remember on, on my phone that Netflix and um, Amazon Prime and all these TV shows, and this plethora of shows, it just shows um, again the, the, the different life experiences that we are trying to talk to in our generation that are alive right now. And I think as we get older, one of our key responsibilities again, is to pass on the leadership to, uh, and our faith to the next generation. Um, now here's, in serving in this generation, in this time that we are in, there's a temptation to look at where we are and we can bemoan our times. Um, some people get nostalgic. You know, they wish they lived in, in simpler times. Um, some people bemoan the problems of our times. I'll admit, I'm one of them. I've gotten so frustrated at times, and Sean who's here in the background is smiling and laughing at me, but I've gotten so frustrated about, and at times I, it feels almost surreal to live in this COVID crisis. I can't, I can't believe where we are sometimes, that we can't gather and that we're, we're not you know, shaking hands and able to hug people. And uh, I'm not a hugger. In fact, somebody on our staff said, you know it's really bad when Tom is complaining you can't hug people. So I'm not like, I'm not a hugger. <laughs> and yet I miss that personal connection. And, I, you know, so we, we can get frustrated right now. Times are tense because people have such different views and there's a tension, attention in social media and all these things. And there is a big temptation to wonder, man, why do I have to live through these times? And to get annoyed by it. And again, I've given into that temptation. But here's where I think we have to go back to the saints understood that God had created them to serve a specific generation, that we, God has placed you and me in this time to serve this generation. To, and it's not an accident. God, it's not like God didn't know we were going to go through this COVID crisis. God, it's not like God didn't know these things were happening. God's not taken off guard. And God calls you and I to look what he's doing in our generation and to make an impact. And it's, I, I almost think it's going to be a cool thing in heaven that we're going to get to talk to saints and we're going to get to talk about what was it like, you know, to be a, a first century follower of Jesus. And that'll be one kind of experience. But 
then the first century follower of Jesus, you know, you could talk to Paul or Peter and be like, you know, we were starting this movement. We didn't know what was going to happen. What was it like to be in the 21st century and everything was shut down and you're using screens to connect to people? You're using technology and you, you're able to connect to the whole world through your place. I mean, Jesus gave us this mission to go out to the whole world and make disciples. You guys were able to sit in your living room or your church office and make that impact. So we have to, to look at what God is doing in our generation and be careful not to be moan what's going on or frustrated what's going on is again we've all tempted to do and i do it but to look what is god doing in this generation uh, so you know I've, I've tried to ask people over and over i respect different people what do you think god is doing right now what do you think god is up to and honestly i've never gotten great answers that have completely satisfied me and i think partly because i've been looking for a silver bullet or that drop the mic kind of response um, you know, I think probably the best response I got was from Peter Herbeck, who some of you might be familiar with, um, writer and speaker. He said, well, I think God's probably playing on 25 different chessboards. And that kind of hit me. God's probably doing a lot right now. And probably we have to just keep seeking what God is doing. You have that quote on your screen here from Pastor Bill Johnson, that God hides secrets for you and not from you. That God has secrets of what he is doing now. Amos 3, 7, for surely the Lord does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. God is doing something. We have to be on the lookout for it. We have to figure out what God is doing. And God is, hides that for us, so we'll seek him out and seek his face. Now, as I think God's probably up to a bunch of different things. You know, I think for some people, this is a real Sabbath time. I know there are people in our parish and who were traveling, you know, nonstop, and they were go, 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 and their kids were at all these different things, or they, again, they were traveling for work all the time. We were certainly traveling a bunch before all this, and now they've stopped, and they've slowed down. And there's a sense in which they're, they're grateful for that. They're, they're embracing that, and it could lead to a new lifestyle on the other side. Yeah, so I, I think that's gonna happen for some people. Uh, that and that's kind of distill and know that our I am God. Um, I think big message definitely that's coming out is we're not in control. I've heard some other people say that, like if you didn't think you were in control before, you have to learn now where there's so much we don't control. Now there are things we can control uh, or we are responsible for, but certainly in the larger world, it's not in our hands, it's in God's hands. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, God is rebuilding his church and that's what you and I get to be a part of. That as we look through this Lenten season and we go through this COVID crisis, that this is a major opportunity to continue to rebuild Christ church and to think about what God is doing in our generation and that the old broken systems and structures are, are going to fall away. Do you want to add anything with that? Well, I don't think you can uh, overemphasize that last point enough. Uh, I think there are structures and systems that were broken and were dysfunctional in the church in our parishes that uh for whatever reason we were we were reluctant to give up on but now must be given up and placed aside so yeah the the that and that's what we got to be figuring out too what what we need to place aside so i know that's not a directly lenten thing but it, it's the right attitude we need to have as we go through this COVID crisis so, so again number one what is god we're serving god in our generation we want to look at what god is doing and then kind of to drill down now a little bit more okay well so what does that mean for lent the way we would approach lent and encourage you to start thinking about lent is to again launch a spiritual campaign that in light of serving this generation what is the campaign the spiritual campaign you should be doing uh now we got this idea from rick warren again we use it for 40 days of purpose uh so what is a spiritual campaign well it is a short-term focus on some aspect of spiritual growth and health um, so that you know so a spiritual campaign is something everyone in your church studies or focuses on for a five to six week period um, well, parishes traditionally always had or often had uh, retreats during Lent and it would be two or three days or evenings where they focus on some uh, spiritual principle or uh, goal but what we're suggesting is just extending that for the whole season, 
yeah, so yeah, the five, the five or six weeks, you can look at it kind of different ways. Um, and so, right, instead of having a three night mission or something like that, no, it's it's for the whole the whole period. And then during that time, use all your channels of communication and programs to reemphasize that topic. So uh, either you can be using books, um, homilies, small group videos, or small group curriculum, or small face sharing communities, Bible studies, uh, daily practice. We want to emphasize that one particularly because as we've been going around the country to different parishes, the interest in small groups is 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 quite high. But when to start groups, how to start groups, how to get people involved in groups, Lent is the perfect time because they can make a commitment just to that season. The reason people don't join small groups is because they're afraid of the commitment. But if you just ask them to get into a group for Lent, they'll be more likely to give it a try. And then they'll see they like it. Yeah, that's exactly what we did for our, the way we launched small groups for our whole parish. We uh, for 40 days of purpose and reading the purpose driven life we said join a small group and we'll give you a book and get it and just do it for Lent just you know and even you can we had little some people promoting it that helped us say hey this is better than giving up chocolate this is better than you know you can give up chocolate and join a small group too but you know this is better than giving up something it was it was nice to be part of a group so uh, use that as a time um, use all those different avenues you have to focus on one area um, families can unite in the same topic. Uh, so usually our children's ministry, our student ministry, and our, our all adults are all hearing the same topic when we do a spiritual campaign. Um, campaigns can help people focus on meeting, on meeting people's felt needs, and we'll talk about that in a second. Campaigns identify an area of growth that you want corporately for the whole church. So as we said, uh, when we did our first spiritual campaign at First Lent many years ago, we said we wanted everybody to get in a small group. And we said, this is the way you're really getting on board this campaign. And we, we used it to launch small groups. Um, identify a campaign can be focused on a habit. So maybe you want to encourage more daily prayer or more reading of scripture uh, or more fasting. We've never done that one. But yes, we have. <laughs> Many we did. <laughs> have we? I still don't like fasting all that much. So that's, that's one of my least ones. Um, you know, or again, a lens through which to see life. So. It, it, so here's some ideas what could be for your spiritual campaign this Lent. Um, you know, right now there's a lot of fear and worry and doubt and shame in the world. And so maybe you want to tackle that issue for the people in your community. Um, we, the, uh, there's a lot of offense out there. People are offended very easily. <laughs> so uh, we did a series just three years ago talking about how not to be offended and why that's such an issue we need to wrestle with. And we have some resources on that. I'll, I'll come back to in a little bit. Uh, this is a period of waiting for people, so you can te teach people how to wait well, you know. Um, we at this slant are going to talk about the power of perseverance, that in order to succeed in our faith, we need to persevere and keep going. Um, a major issue out there right now is loneliness. So a major theme of your spiritual campaign could be about our need for connection, and then launch small groups in order to help people have that connection. or you could think through different ideas through the Lenten season of how to be connecting people um, virtually or otherwise. And then, um, you know, another big thing that right now is priorities. So right now we are doing a message series. That's what we do. We take a topic and over a series of weeks, we dive into it. And we're talking about um, how, to, to, how to put your priorities in order for your life to start 2021. So one of the things we're doing with that, we're doing a workshop. It's going to start tomorrow night. And we just threw this workshop out there. You know, it was it kind of fit with it, this life planning workshop where you put together a document uh, that just is your life plan. And I, again, we threw it out there like, oh, we'll try it. I thought we'd get 25 people. That was okay. That's what I thought. We have 350 people signed up for this. <laughs> so I, I don't know what it is. I'm trying to figure out what it is, but we stumbled onto something. So People are definitely interested in priorities and figuring out the plan for their life right now. Whatever. Go ahead. So just, just to say, you know, oftentimes we hear uh, parish leaders saying that their pastors don't want to do message series. And um, I, I would just encourage you to, to encourage 
him to think that through again. And if he's reluctant to give it a try, again, just do it for the season of Lent and see how it works. And I think that he will find, I know that he will find, message series are easier, they're more effective, they're more engaging, and they're going to get people involved in other stuff like your workshop. Yeah, that's a great, and again, it's great. It's a limited period of time. That's the way the great thing, the power of a spiritual campaign or a Lenten campaign is it's a limited amount of time. Um, again, we want, so we want to address the felt needs in light of what God is doing so that people can connect with God. And again, all of this is going to add value to people's lives um, if we can be thinking about their needs and their needs to, to grow. Um, we want to be creating content that's connecting people to God and to one another and to us and building relationships and, and building that connection a spiritual campaign again will help people connect again in all these different ways from from connecting to the the weekend message or homily to connecting in small groups uh and again another thing you can do there is send out a daily prayer uh you that's a prayer you could you got people sign up and say hey, i want to get a prayer that's going to help me on this spiritual campaign throughout lent and just again you just do that for lent send that you could record a video on your iphone and send those out every day you could write something up and send it out via email and use MailChimp or whatever whatever system you use to send emails out to your, your community. Uh, but again, all these things are creating um, a focused intensity on the topic that you want you, that you're sharing with. It's going to build people's spiritual growth and, and depth. Uh, I like uh, Dave Ramsey says again, um, moment, it creates momentum. It'll create spiritual momentum. Momentum is simply focused intensity over time. It's over this period of time, focusing your intensity on a specific topic. Um, so what are some, again, some of the elements of spiritual campaign? They're kind of up there. Uh, before that, I just love this quote from Dallas Willard I, I, I discovered today. Uh, God takes care of his church, and our efforts as leaders must be directed towards fostering each individual's adventure with him. You know, that's what spiritual campaigns are about fostering an individual's spiritual adventure with God. So again, some of the very specific elements of a spiritual campaign, uh, the message series um, for the weekend or weekend homilies, uh, take a topic and address it over a series of weeks. This is the major driver. Um, this is the engine that will make any campaign successful or your Lenten campaign successful. Um, as Father Michael said earlier, we'll, before we do a message series, we like to write out write out a summary of where we're going and a kind of an arc to the series or the journey we're trying to take people through the campaign, you know, or through the series. What's going to be different after than before? Um, and obviously that depends upon what the series is about. In the series on priorities we're talking about right now, we hope people have a better understanding of their priorities. And for the people that choose to go the deepest, they'll have a plan for their lives that will outline what their priorities are. Um, for If you're doing a campaign on prayer, you might be, well, people are going to start praying every day or at least four to six times a day or, or four to six times a week or whatever you want it to be. But we try to figure out what is going to be different both in people's lives individual, as individuals and what's going to be different in the church. Let me say something else about message series because I know this is a stumbling block for a lot of parishes. And parish leaders are, are frustrated that they can't get the parish, the pastor, the associate pastor on board with this. If, if that is, is exactly where you're at right now, uh, 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 plan B could be, and we haven't talked about this, so I'm just going to say it. Go ahead. A plan B could be that you as a parish leader provide the messages with your pastor's permission, of course, but that you can provide, provide the messages, post them online. And small groups, as they gather, can listen to them as part of their small group gathering, or they can listen to them in anticipation of your small group gathering. Because the important thing is that you've got a central message that is driving the spiritual campaign, and that that message is the focus of small group life. That what you're saying in the main weekly message is what they're talking about in small group. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're trying to bring all these things together and driving towards one point, one thing that we want to get through to people. And it, again, the message series from the message, the homily on the weekends, to then the small groups, 
um, which you can launch and begin over Zoom. Our 90% of our small groups have moved from meeting in person to now meeting over Zoom or other, uh, you know, Microsoft Teams or whatever vi uh, video venue you want to use from there. Um, again, you can send out, you can do a daily prayer as part of your campaign. Uh, and that doesn't have to be anything. It could just be a little scripture verse. Uh, we send out a daily email that's a scripture verse and a, one or two paragraphs. Um, it could be a email, a video of a pastor if you wanted to get on, on your phone every day and just record that and send that out as a prayer. Um, it doesn't have to be high production, but do something that it, it gets to reinforce. Right? Or you can use ours. We also have a daily prayer and the mountain devotion. I was going to get to that. I'm sorry. That's okay. You know, it's right on my notes, right next. <laughs> so we can give out the daily devotional from Ave. So if you're uh, if you're interested, we do have uh, our Rebuild Parish um, as part of our group. Uh, we do have resources. That is the message series we did three years ago, which produced that book, that devotional. You could give that out as well. You know, maybe there's some other book that's hit you personally in the last year that either you can give out or promote um, that encourage people to buy on Kindle or, or whatever. But again, the idea of the, again, the spiritual campaign is we are trying to marshal all the ways we communicate with people and all the communication avenues we have, which is really a lot more than you think, and bring people all together all along on this on the same journey. And it, it is just so powerful. And Lent, and Lent is really the most is the best time to do this. Um, one other thought, if, you, if you're going to launch this kind of campaign, bring together a core group of people that help support the various aspects. Don't try to do it all on your own. Bring in some volunteers and some other leaders that can help you. Have each person take responsibility for these different things. Um, it, talk about your message in your group. At, at Nativity, we have a message team that meets every single week, and we talk about the past week's homily and then the week that's coming up. And we we get different perspectives from people who have different life perspectives, from, from moms to dads to single single men and women. And we get this greater perspective of how to communicate with the whole parish. Uh, and just another thought on this, you know, home is the new hub. Um, since the crisis, home has become the new hub for um, fitness, <laughs> school, work, shopping, entertainment, and now church. And some of, I think probably some of the children's and student ministers, you probably are, are, you know, youth ministry, you are already ahead of this. You are already trying to figure out how to bring the family together around some uh, spiritual growth. Well, now is the perfect time for that. So be thinking, of, you, now is a great time to be thinking about how are you bringing the whole family together again around a, a spiritual principle. Um, again, we have resources at rebuiltparish.com if you want to check that out. Uh, especially if you want to look at how we have done message series in the past. Do you want to add anything? Oh, my. Uh, no. Okay. Just breathing deeply. Uh, <laughs> and then, so number one, again, we are called this, this Lent. We are, reminder: we are called to serve this generation to help them see God, to seek the God, the God of Jacob. So you, we're not here by accident. Two, to leverage this time for a spiritual campaign this Lent. And then three, you know, the, we just want to look at some practical touchstones that are our, that were a part of our experience. That maybe we need to rethink a little bit. So obviously we have Ash Wednesday, um, and Ash Wednesday is such an easy, an interesting thing because you know it's a day that attracts church people and unchurched people, um, you know, and so it's going to be very different this year. Um, we're trying to figure out different ways um, that we can engage people. Obviously the ashes. There's something, whatever it is about ashes. Have you figured it out yet? Why people want ashes? Right. So <laughs> they're gritty, they're real. <laughs> they're real, but people are attracted to that. So uh, we're still trying to figure out some ideas and ide talking to our diocese. It's another, the, it's another touchstone, like Palm on Palm Sunday, like, uh, you know, the crash at Christmas time. Right. Um, so, yeah, those, those touchstones. So, go, you know, we're the church in the nativity. So we had our plan for Christmas pretty much by September. <laughs> This we're a little, we're a little, we're still catching up. We're still kept trying to figure out Lent. So um, as part of Nativity, we knew we had to have Christmas right. You know, I guess if you're the Church of the Holy Cross or you're you're the Resurrection, you better have have it right. But um, you know, so we're we're still figuring this through. So one of the things we have an idea though is at Christmas we put together a Christmas kit for people watching online. And the the thing we realized was the anchor of that kit. There was a bunch of cool things like there was a hot chocolate in there. Mm -hmm. There was a Christmas ornament for your tree. Um, 
there was a little thing to give out to invite some other people to join us on Christmas Eve online. But the anchor of it was the candles because we had this really special moment where we light the candles and play Silent Night. And that's what made the kit go. Well, it seems like now if we're looking at the idea of a kit for Ash Wednesday, possibly the ashes make that kit go and maybe we can put together a devotional and some prayers for people to take home. Uh, for Palm Sunday, again, Palm is a touchstone for people. You know, for that, we're beginning to think, how can we have people come up here and make an event and pick up the Palm, but do something for kids and families at that time. But begin to be thinking, what are, you know, especially Ash Wednesday, the Ashes and Palm Sunday, how you can do that and use Ash Wednesday to launch your campaign and draw people into it. And then Palm Sunday may be an opportunity for people to come onto your campus engage families and, and just engage people in general. So that's the kind of direction we are headed. Do you want to add anything more to that? No, keep going. All right. Actually, that's all I got. Okay. So from that, I know we don't have a ton of very specific things, but hopefully that begins to get your mind thinking and priming the pump. So Aaron, I'll turn it back over to you for questions. Absolutely. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I think um, you really did hit the nail on the head with this. Um, the the ideas the the specifics um were great and i wanted to say that my family and i celebrated christmas eve mass with all of you it was beautiful i really felt that the spirit um was alive and at work and so um thank you for that oh great yes we have lots of questions coming in, and I certainly encourage um, anyone who has not yet submitted a question. Tom, you asked at the beginning, you know, where were people in their planning process for Lent? And most of them were at the beginning stages, um, seeking maybe a little bit of insight from their diocese for some of the more technical things like the ashes. Um, but definitely we're looking to this for some ideas. Um, which I think you definitely provided. I don't know if you could add anything to this. Leah asked this question early on in your presentation, but I want to ask it anyway. She said that they plan a six-week live stream spirituality series, but cannot find a creative theme that runs through all sessions. Looking for theme relevant to pandemic times and goes beyond the traditional prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Any additional thoughts? Sure. I mean, um, again, I know uh, we on our, our website right now, we have Refill Parish, we have some we did on a fence, and I know that ran through. Sometimes it takes a little bit of creativity. If, I, I assume she's looking through the lectionary. I, I don't know. Um, the, I, I think the you know creativity actually comes by having discipline and having some constraints. So I think there are plenty of themes within the lectionary to do that. Uh, again, we're going to talk about perseverance. I know that's in there. That would be easy. Five, you know, Jesus had to persevere to the cross. We're tempted away from persevering through our faith. Um, we need a community of people to help us persevere. That's kind of in the transfiguration. Um, so there's plenty of things there. Again, I, going back to fear and worry and doubt are really huge in people right now. Yeah. So I, I think you can probably find some of those themes in the scriptures as well. Uh, just one thing I forgot to mention, Aaron, too, mm -hmm. is we help host webinars on Wednesday, so we don't compete with you guys, um, at rebuildparish.com. You can find out and sign up for webinars, because we're going to keep going through this over the next four weeks uh, as we get closer to Lent. Every single Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be talking about Lent. So as our plans are coming more together, we're gathering a community of people together to work through this. And that's what we want to be at Rebuild Parish, a community of people that's working to reach our generation. So um, right. people might want to think about checking us out there as their plans continue to go. Absolutely. So rebuiltparish.com, you said. That's right, rebuiltparish.com. Okay. Wonderful. OK, Anne asks, we've had a concern raised about distributing ashes on the forehead. That's a lot of foreheads. <laughs> Any <laughs> thoughts? Well, I think it's an open question right now. There was an instruction that came out of the Vatican last week, asking that we not apply the ashes in the traditional manner of, of the cross on the forehead, that instead they're sprinkled on the top of the head. That's actually a practice in many places in, in Europe previously. 
and they're asking everyone to undertake it. Our concern is that that will be an unattractive proposal to a lot of people and can lead to some pushback in real time. So we have a question into the diocese. Are there other options uh, available to us? Like for instance, uh, giving people a small container of ashes that they can take home and apply themselves. I don't, haven't heard yet whether that's permissible, but are there other options uh, available? Because the sprinkling just doesn't seem that attractive. Yeah, and our, right, our thought was people can take that home, put a little prayer service to it. And again, going back to that, the home is the new hub. That there could Maybe be other- have like a prayer service at home, gather the family around, pray together. Apply the ashes. Yeah. So, and, and again, I think it's very interesting. There's been a there's been a desire in the church, I think, to make the family the hub again. You know, the home, the hub. You know, we we talk domestic about church. the domestic church, mm-hmm. and maybe again, that's what God's opportunity that God is giving us right now. And we could use Ash Wednesday to, to leverage that. Absolutely. Um, Some of the questions are coming in as you were talking and Tanya said, you know, what would we tell the, and you might not have the answer to this yet because you haven't had word back from your diocese, but what could we tell parishioners to do with the extra ashes? Uh, Return them? (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, return them to the earth, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure that I know the answer to that, but okay. um, I think that uh, like the um, extra uh, consecrated wine that we pour down the sacrarium, it goes into the ground. I think it would be appropriate that the ashes return to the earth. Dust to return. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> ashes okay. to dust to dust. Right, absolutely. Okay. Colleen says, in Boston, we will be using Q-tips to apply the ashes so that personal contact does not take place. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Father Roland asks, how early should you start planning a spiritual campaign? Also, are there challenges making the weekend homilies message uh, campaign work with the Sunday gospel? Well, yeah, I mean, I would say ASAP and then, <laughs> you know, um, so it is, you know, right in real time. Um, yeah, I think, you know, that's what we do. And um, we take a topic and we drill into that over the series of weeks. And we've been doing it for many years now. I guarantee you that um, if you have a topic, it's in the readings. It is there. It's, it's a spiritual there. issue. So it does take some creativity at times, um, but no, not less so at Lent. Yeah, less, less so at Lent. Lent. And and you're not t- you're not taking a topic and cr- trying to cram the readings into that topic. It's the other way around, really. Yeah. You want to find inspiration from the readings and the topic, the series, the theme emerges out of them. And again, at Lent, it's easier than any other time of the year. Now, I will tell you one thing we do do that's um, sometimes different than what is the practice. You know, we don't try to make all three of the readings work. We usually focus on one of the readings, the first year, the second reading, uh, the gospel. And, you know, we, we don't we don't try to bring it all together in that way, that we find what's in there. Um, you know, we, were gonna di- we want to try to delve deep more deeply into a, script, a scripture passage. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, somebody mentioned here principles of social justice might be a topic which connects a Lent, Lent campaign, you know, in a teaching series or a message series. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah, Lent is certainly a deeper kind of weight to it, right? There's just, you know, spring, you know, Easter is spring and, and light, but Lent is certainly, you know, deeper. Mm hmm. So the message series really can be as grand or as small as you want it to be. Yes. Yeah. I, as and I like to say there's kind of two different kinds of message series that we do. One is kind of an umbrella. I say so you could be talking about prior. You know, uh, you could talk about priorities. Like say we're doing this series on priorities, and we could have done it like, well, how to prioritize your time, how to prioritize your money, how to prioritize your relationships. Or, and this is what we're doing for this series, you're taking people on a journey of 
uh, of the priory. So you, there's more of like removing from introducing the topic to anchoring your identity in Christ is where we want in the second week for the baptism of the Lord and that you need to see your identities from that perspective. Uh, and then um, talking about this past weekend of prayer, you know, obviously with, with the call of Samuel, and now you want to be set in the priors of your life in relationship with God. Um, to this weekend, um, or, now I'm blanking out on what's what's coming up this weekend, but um, you know the idea, and we're also kind of moving from like your big, huge priorities to now what's your weekly priorities, to what's going to be your daily priorities. For example, in a couple of weeks, the gospel will be about Jesus getting up early in the morning and praying and deciding not to go back into Capernaum, but to go to the next town. Well, how did he know that? Well, he decided his daily priorities based on prayer. So um, that kind of series kind of moves in a direction more. Again, there, there's so many different ways. It, it's it's a fun thing to do, actually. <laughs> so um, it, it can, but as you said, it can be as grand or as small as you want it. Mm -hmm. Eric, that's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, to, to not scare people that think maybe they don't have enough time to do it right or they don't have enough people on board it doesn't have to be huge but starting somewhere with it yeah and again there's plenty of other resources out there that have already again we provide resources uh, we early on borrowed resources from other places too so mm -hmm. we're all on the same team in this so don't feel like you gotta you gotta do it all from scratch absolutely so uh, Ken asked uh, some questions about you all at Nativity, Church of Nativity. Are you holding mass at, masses in person? What's your attendance like? What was your attendance like at Christmas? Uh, Pre-COVID, we had five weekend uh, masses. Currently, we have three in-person masses. Um, we see to 35% capacity. We have a reservation system. Uh, that goes live on Wednesdays, uh, and if you want to come to church, you make a reservation, um, and it's worked out well for us. If you want to see how we do it, you can check it out at churchnativity.com, um, and then we live stream those same services and then rebroadcast them throughout the rest of the day on, on Sundays. So that's where we're at in compliance with the state of Maryland and the Archdiocese of Baltimore, and it's working out pretty well. What was the second part of the question? Um, let me go back up here. Uh, what's your attendance like? Oh, and Christmas, your attendance like Christmas. Attendance is, a, is tough to measure these days because um, you're, you're on these different platforms and they provide you with different kinds of information. Uh, the best we can say, is is that to the best of our knowledge uh we had about eleven thousand devices uh on logged in for our main christmas mass at four o'clock on christmas eve uh the other ones i'm not so sure about but i suppose that each device on christmas eve represents multiple people as well Mm -hmm. yeah, I joked, we, I have some of a family of 10 who must have had 110,000 people. But yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was quite that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Well, I think that is just about it from our end here with questions. Again, thank you so much. I think this has been really valuable, really worthwhile. Um, all the different ideas that you gave to as topical, uh, possible topics for the message series was really great too. Um, so thank you again. Um, rebuiltparish.com, right? Resources there, churchnativity.com. Yep, that's what I was going to just remind people about the webinars, Aaron, just rebuildparish.com and the webinars. And we have all, all our webinars we've done throughout the COVID crisis, too, you can catch up on. But really, we'll be going deeper into Lent over the next four weeks. So Great. keep the conversation going. Absolutely. Thank you. And as Father's holding up, I've got a picture here of the messages of letting go. Um, this came from one of your message series. And um, so we wanted to offer it to all of you at a discount of 25% off. Use code webinar 0119 for today's date when ordering at AveMariaPress.com. And below you see on this slide are all of the other books in the Rebuilt Parish series. I'd like, just like to say that uh, we had a similar booklet during Advent, yes. and 
We uh, used it as a gift to a lot of our volunteers and our staff. Uh, it didn't cost us a lot of money and they really, it went over really, really well. So you might want to think about uh, uh, doing that as well. Yeah, perfect for small groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, well, once again, um, the webinar recordings are all available on Vimeo YouTube and at our AveMariaPress.com website. And I'll be sending all of you an email tomorrow with the link to the recording. Please join us next week. Mike Aquilina will be talking about the, the pivotal role that Mary has uh, played in um, history, um, in our world, as well as in our lives. So gentlemen, once again, thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate it so much. And everyone have a blessed Lent. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.